So residential schools were effectively used by the government to remove indigenous culture from the country. These schools brought students forcefully from their communities, stripped them of any indigenous identity that they may have, their heritage, their language, and for many of them, their lives. Since the end of May, using ground-penetrating radar, three communities within Canada have announced the finding of more than 1,000 unmarked graves, many of which likely hold Indigenous children's remains on the sites of former residential schools. In 2015, the estimate was about 4,100 children likely died attending these schools. We believe that number could be as high as 15,000 now. We do know from testimony and from records that students died of negligence, they died of starvation, they died of disease, and increasingly there's a belief that their deaths were deliberate in some cases. These are unmarked graves. Removing headstones is a crime in this country, and we are treating this like a crime scene. Residential schools were effectively a vehicle of forced assimilation for Indigenous communities across the country. Beginning in the 1800s, both the Catholic Church and kind of what is now the federal government brought students forcefully from their communities, stripped them of their heritage, uh, their hair was cut, they were forced to wear European clothing, they were given European names, they were not allowed to speak in their native language, they were forced to become Christian, many were beaten. These schools were effectively used by the government to remove Indigenous culture, colonizing much of the country. And the last one closed in 1996. This is not ancient history, this is a very fresh uh, past for them. It could have been my brothers, it could have been me. Couldn't have ran away, I could have drowned in a river. I was only eight years old. There's a lot of blame trading happening right now between the federal government and the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is, is the last group that oversaw these schools that has not issued a formal apology. The Pope tweeted out and, and kind of said he felt closest to the Canadian people, but fell short of, of issuing an apology. As part of the federal government's financial settlement with survivors of residential schools, there was the creation of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which was thousands of hours of, of testimony from survivors of what happened in these schools. Survivors spoke you know, quite painfully of, of sexual abuse, of emotional abuse, of physical abuse in these schools, but it wasn't until the ground penetrating radar picked up these graves that Canadians were forced to really grapple with and acknowledge that these sites are real. And Canadians today are horrified and ashamed of how our country behaved. Federal government and, and key ministers in that government have issued you know, heartfelt apologies. But at the same time, Justin Trudeau's government is, is in litigation with residential school survivors in court. And he has so far ignored calls for a national investigation into the deaths. So I think for a lot of people, it's tough to square what those apologies mean when it comes to concrete action that Indigenous leaders have said would be necessary to move forward. What does it take for government to believe what we went through? So on the one hand, there is a intergenerational trauma that spans back to the schools, but also it's situated in a country in which there are still vast inequities. There's 34 First Nations across the country that don't have access to clean drinking water. Indigenous people are overrepresented in incarceration across the country. Indigenous women are far more likely to be killed than any other group in the country. And right now, you know, one of the biggest calls is to announce the formation of a, of a national investigation, um, one that is free of government intervention, um, as a show of good faith that, that the government is concerned about achieving the truth of the truth and reconciliation aspect. Reconciliation is a whole other question, but there is a lot of undiscovered truths right now, and it's about time those, those came to light. This has just been three schools that have given us over 1,000 unmarked graves. The federal government funded more than 130 schools across the country. So what we're seeing is really just the tip of the iceberg in terms of understanding the scope and the depth of the tragedy.